So we're a few weeks away from launching our new 2022 car, probably the biggest regulation changes chassis-wise from the last 50 years. And uh, before we do so, we can uh, stop for a second and have a look back on how the regulations evolved since the start of the new uh, hybrid power unit era, basically from 2014 to 2021. Starting with 2014, uh, it was very much a jump into the hybrid era. Alongside the new power unit came as well some fairly significant changes on the uh, chassis side. Some of them were directly linked to uh, aerodynamic performance, other to safety. For aerodynamic performance, it was just a reduction of downforce. The front wing got narrower. We also removed the uh, beam wing just to get a balanced loss of downforce. And then for safety came the uh, new regulations to enforce lower noses. In the previous years, there was a tendency for aero performance to design cars with a very high nose and chassis. That was very efficient for downforce. It was very good to feed the floor in terms of floor quality. But when there was an accident, there was always a tendency that one car was going to launch above the other one. And that was quite dangerous for the drivers. So, the 2014 regulations try to lower the chassis, get a new wording for the nose to make sure all the cars would end up with a low nose. And when you have a side accident, you just stay where you are. You don't, you don't risk to launch a bomb. The other aspect which affected the uh, chassis performance for aerodynamics was the relocation of the exhaust tailpipe. All the cars were using the exhaust gas to enhance the aerodynamic performance of the diffuser. So in the early 2010s, we were talking about blown diffusers with directly the tailpipe on the floor next to the tires. Then when we got to 2012, there was a first attempt to relocate the tailpipe to back off performance, but then teams still managed to find another location, which was on the side of the bodywork, quite a stream of the tires and other aerodynamic ways to still get the benefit. So, to make it simple, the regulations prescribe the tailpipe location under the rear wing, above the crash structure, in a location where there is nothing you can blow the gas towards. The effect of the exhaust relocation was the most powerful because in the previous years, the biggest aerodynamic update you could see in season was not a wing, was not a floor, it was a new engine map. All this put together in 2014 led to a reduction of downforce, something like 20 to 30%, and the cars were aerodynamically a lot simpler to manage. In parallel to these chassis changes, with the new power unit, of course it became a bit more difficult to package the new bigger power unit in the car and of course, we also had to cool much more components, much more fluids than we were used to. The engine block itself is very small, but then all the side components, the exhaust, the turbo, the compressor, the plenum, the intercooler, all these start to take a lot of space. Uh, they all need independent cooling. So independently from the aerodynamics, the power unit in terms of cooling started to create a lot of challenges to design the car, package the car, and try and get something quite small, which aerodynamics could exploit to enhance all the performance. The other aspect in 2014, which was quite significant as a consequence of the new power unit, was a large increase in minimum weight. So the cars became quite a lot heavier to a minimum weight of 690 kilo. This was quite quite a large step to manage with the chassis design. The other aspect in terms of weight was with the new power unit, new fuel load regulations. With the hybrid engines came a maximum fuel allowance for the race of 100 kilo, with a fuel flow rate of 100 kg per hour. But the key was the 100 kg of fuel for the entire race. Again, in comparison to the uh, V8s of the previous years, in a race, we would tend to use, broadly speaking, 170 kilo of fuel. So the new engines became far more efficient. As a consequence of the fuel load in a race, the car would be a bit lighter, 
but when you were going to qualify, the car was quite a lot heavier than before. So putting all together, you have a heavier car with less downforce. It's a recipe for, for having a car a bit more difficult to manage and less performing than in the previous years. The last aspect which started to be quite significant from 2014 onwards was the uh, tower management. All the teams started more and more to look and to invest into managing the towers through a stint, understanding all the thermal behavior, the wear, and all these aspects really started ramping up through these years that was going to feed in all the following years to quite a large extent. 2015, 2016, beyond the uh, tweak on the nose regulations, all remain quite stable. And you would see the cars, they would evolve in a fairly subtle manner. And the biggest changes you would see were across each year when you would have the opportunity to review the entire power unit packaging, a new chassis, you would review all your cooling package, you would have an opportunity to review your front and rear suspension, your gearbox. So this is where you would see the biggest changes. And typically, you would see a trend of the cars shrinking more and more in size towards the back. You would get more compact radiators, more compact power units, smaller gearbox, and all this was just freeing up potential for aerodynamic performance. 